Hello, I'm Dr. Amy Burton, and in this short talk, I'm going to introduce you to the theoretical foundations of interpretive phenomenological analysis. Over the next few slides, I will explore both the short and long history of IPA, with a particular focus on the three key influences for the approach, phenomenology, hermeneutics and ideography. I'm going to start with an overview of the short history of IPA, explaining when and by whom the, the approach was first developed. IPA emerged in the UK in the 1990s. Jonathan Smith published the first paper on IPA in 1996, making the history of IPA itself fairly short. In his paper, Smith argued for a new approach in psychology that would capture the qualitative and experience-based aspects of phenomena while still engaging with the theory and literature within mainstream psychology. The key push was for recognition of the qualitative approach grounded in psychology, rather than borrowing methodologies from other disciplines such as sociology. Smith argued that there was a scope for psychology to be both experimental and experiential, and that both are important for our understandings within the discipline. The first IPA papers were largely published in health psychology, with a focus on experiences of health and illness. Popularity of the approach flourished and the approach appealed to those in other areas of psychology, including clinical and counselling and broader disciplines such as human health and social sciences. Furthermore, the approach quickly developed international reach, with researchers employing the method all over the world. In 2009, Smith, in collaboration with Paul Flowers and Michael Larkin, produced a textbook providing a guide to using IPA in research, and in 2022 this textbook was updated. This book is recommended as your starting point for reading when considering using and applying IPA in your own research. Since then, there has been an explosion of IPA research. I'm now going to dig a little deeper into the long history of IPA and the theory and philosophy on which the approach is based. As the name suggests, one of the key influences in IPA is phenomenology. Phenomenology is a philosophical approach to the study of experience. Phenomenologists share an interest in what it's like to be human or lived experience. We gather personal accounts of objects and events. Husserl proposed a method of phenomenology to enable basic concepts to be examined in a rigorous way and provide a firm basis for science. He was critical of the way that experimental approaches were informed by prior abstract concepts or hypothesis rather than beginning with concrete experience. He famously asserted that we need to go back to the things themselves. Husserl advocated the possibility of stepping out of our everyday experience to examine that everyday experience using a phenomenological attitude. This involves turning our focus from the phenomena in the world outside to focus on our internal perception of those phenomena. To do this, we need to disengage from our taken for granted experience. Through a process called reduction, Husserl's aim was to uncover the essence of experience. Heidegger was critical of Husserl's phenomenology as being too theoretical and too abstract. He proposed a new way of thinking about phenomenology that he argued was more phenomenological than Husserl's approach. He argued that it was not possible to gather knowledge without some element of interpretation being employed. Therefore, we can never directly or completely gain an insider's perspective, as access to this knowledge is dependent on our interpretations. Heidegger's work acknowledges that we are embedded within a world of objects, relationships, language and culture that play a role in our understanding of experiences. In IPA, we're aiming for development of an insider's perspective on a phenomena. We want to develop a picture and understanding of an experience from the participant's perspective. However, IPA also acknowledges that perception is dependent on our interpretations of experience influenced by history, culture, language and relationships. Now we are going to explore hermeneutics or the theory of interpretation. Recur distinguished between two kinds of interpretation. Meaning recollection involves presenting findings that are faithful to the accounts and meanings presented by participants. The second form, suspicion, is the more critical and questioning analysis of these accounts, aiming to uncover unspoken meaning that may exist below the surface account provided by a participant. This approach to interpretation uses outside theoretical perspectives in order to shed light on the phenomena. Meaning recollection is going back to Conrad's insider perspective and trying to see what it's like from the participant's view and stand in their shoes. But IPA also aims to stand alongside the participant and look at them from a different angle, question what's happening for them, why they're making sense of phenomena in the way that they are. This moves away from reflecting the participants' accounts towards a reliance on interpretive work by the researcher. 
Good IPA combines both of these approaches. It's both empathic in that it seeks to present the participants' accounts of the phenomena, but also includes questioning through which we hope to analyse, illuminate and make sense of that phenomena. There's a lot of interpretation involved in IPA. We recognise this within the double hermeneutic. We begin with an experience. This is where something happens to us within our life world. We get information about that phenomena through our senses and we use that information to understand our experience. When we collect data, we're not able to go and live that experience from the participant's perspective. Even if we were to observe them engaging in a phenomena, we would only be able to record our observations of them. We couldn't be in their shoes and live the activity for them. Instead, we usually collect accounts of the phenomena from the participant. This account represents their interpretation of the phenomena and is the first level of abstraction away from the phenomena itself as lived. To complicate matters further, we then go on to analyse that account. The themes or ideas thought through our analysis and are our interpretations of the account and are therefore another step away from the direct experience. We call this the double hermeneutic. There are a few more things to consider in relation to hermeneutics. The first is the impact of our prior knowledge on our interpretations. It's impossible for us to make sense of the world without drawing on our own preconceptions and prior experience. In IPA, we want to give priority to our participants' account rather than these preconceptions. However, you do not know exactly which preconceptions are relevant until you engage with the data. And in fact, engaging with the data may make you more conscious of preconceptions you hold but were previously unaware of. This is why reflexivity is so important and highlights the impossibility of objectively bracketing our preconceptions and preventing them from playing a role in our analysis. IPA acknowledges a dynamic relationship between the part and the whole. To understand the experience of the phenomena for one participant, we need to look across the phenomena as a whole. And in order to understand the whole, we need to consider the parts of our individual participants' accounts. We are actively involved in the interpretive process. We do not argue that our analysis is more true than the direct account of our participants, but our analytical claims may offer meaningful insights which go beyond the explicit statements of our participants. We offer a perspective on the data that the participant themselves is unable to provide because our analysis is informed by our oversight of the whole account, the data set as a whole and dialogue with psychological theory. In this way, our analysis provides added value to the accounts themselves. The final key influence for IPA is ideography. When we use IPA, we're not concerned with making claims about groups or populations or establishing general laws of human behaviour. IPA has a commitment to the particular. This occurs in two ways. Firstly, a commitment to detail, in which analysis is thorough, systematic and captures the depth of an experience. Secondly, this is through a commitment to understanding particular phenomena, such as events, processes or relationships from the perspective of particular people. We're interested in embodied and situated perspectives. We must always remember that we are situated beings and therefore the phenomena are embedded in physical world and our relationships with others. So the phenomena and sense making explored are not properties of the individual, but are instead insights into the perspectives on the relationship to and involvement in the phenomena of interest. The IPA method adopts analytical procedures that help us move from single cases to more general statements while still being able to return to the particular claims of the individual. IPA emphasises the value of the case study and highlights the link between the particular and the general. In line with the hermeneutic cycle, we acknowledge that the particular eternally underlies the general and the general eternally has to comply with the particular. So in summary, the short history of IPA is that it was an approach developed by Jonathan Smith in the 1990s. The long history relates to the philosophy underpinning the three key influences for the approach, phenomenology, hermeneutics and finally ideography. When we use IPA, we want to know in detail what experience for this person is like and what sense this person is making of what is happening to them. This was a very brief introduction. There's a lot more to read on the subject and the very interested could even go back to the texts of the philosophers mentioned in this talk. However, for a comprehensive exploration of these concepts, a good place to start would be the Smith, Flowers and Larkin text. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to IPA and I hope you're looking forward to getting started and conducting some analysis.